this world without a guarantee that you're going to be born into a stable and healthy and loving family. You aren't given that choice. Just boom, there you are. I mean, even the family may put you up for adoption. So there's another challenge that you just don't know if they can't be able to take care of you for whatever reason and you got to be adopted by another family who is hopefully a healthy and loving and stable family. It's the deck is stacked against you in all your life. Think about that. So you have no choice in what family you're born into. And whatever family you have, it's their responsibility to feed and clothe you and take care of you and love you and support you. That's their job. You, you can't do that. You're a child. You're developing. You don't understand stuff. As you get older, you do. Well, <laughs> for the most part, hopefully you do. I can only speak from my point of view. I think my biggest weakness as a teen was just pure hormones. I mean, girls are now different. They're attractive to you. They really look good and you want to be around them and <laughs> do things with them, get to know them and do physical things with them, of course. So that really messes up your focus. And man, it, it I really just couldn't seem to balance it out. And when I finally did get a girlfriend in college, we had a good relationship. It was four years and she was very supportive of me being in my plays and she had her own little creative Thing. She was a good singer. I mean, it didn't last, obviously. But then with my next girlfriend, we met in a play. And then I got so distracted with her. Because at that point, I was really pursuing acting. I did some extra work. I was trying to get into it. And then I meet her in a play and sideline everything. Dumb, dumb, dumb. But even in the years, it was four years before I met my future wife, I I think I dabbled in a little voiceover. I never tried theater or acting or anything like that. I just could not focus. Maybe I felt I couldn't make it. And competition is super fierce. And like I said, I'm not a great singer. I'm an okay singer. I'm a really good actor, performer when it comes to that. So, but even then, you know, there was just, I had the option to possibly move into Manhattan with my grandmother. She only spoke Spanish. She knew a little English, but she only spoke Spanish. But I would have been in Manhattan, but I was a sheep. <laughs> I like to say there's two types of people. You're either a shepherd or a sheep. So the shepherds lead the flock, they handle things, they are in control, the, the people will follow them, the sheep will follow them. Or you're a sheep where you follow this anybody blindly. Someone says, go over there, you do. Someone says, uh, let's go rob a bank, okay, let's get involved with this kind of shenanigans, okay. Without even questioning it or wondering it or wait, saying, you know, maybe this doesn't feel right. I was such a sheep. <laughs> I don't know why. I was eager to please people and be liked. And it's not like I wasn't loved and liked. I had friends. I had family. I don't know what it was. Hey, this may not be artistic stuff, but it's introspective time. It's Thanksgiving time. I have an episode here with just me. And... I'm trying to help you see that you are worthy. You do matter. Not just as an artist, but as a person. Whatever your age, it's never too late to start. Granted, I wish I'd started this stuff when I was in my 20s and not get so sidelined by stuff. But hopefully, whatever I'm saying will sit with you. It'll... Be something you identify with, maybe. And spread the word to someone else and let them know. Life is very short. You know, it can... It can be over before you know it. And I said this at my mom's service, that you, you think about when your time is up. 
and people are up here talking about you. What do you want them to say about you and your life? Was it a life worth remembering? Did you leave some kind of legacy behind? You know, was it something like, oh, yeah, he was a good guy. I mean, he did that. We had a few laughs, but... Because at that time when you pass, it's not going to be something like, yeah, he earned $1.5 million in his life. He has a private jet or he has a, a few hedge funds that have done well. He owns 50 department stores. That's the stuff that newspapers and obituaries write. But when people are up there eulogizing you it's about your character about what you did for them what kind of legacy did you leave behind for them what are you remembered for were you a loving generous giving honest person with lots of integrity inspiration passion or were you just Joe Schmo that people could not give a hoot about what do you want to be remembered for? I admire a lot about my mom. She managed to raise me practically by herself. And a lot of my sister's life was the same way. She was raising her by herself. And in the end, they were sharing a house together. So they were together a lot. And my mom got to experience three years with my niece. And left an impression on her too she still sees her my niece she just turned four and she still senses her presence which is really nice I mean at that age she may not remember her as she gets older but she's still connecting with her somehow some way and it's adorable to see funny thing about my niece I mean I went there in 2016 and she got kind of I don't know very standoffish with me and she was crying a lot I tried to hold her when I visited in that time and it wasn't happening for me like okay so there was this little bit of a shadow between us and then when I finally got to see her last year in 2018 for the first time since then is when uh, she came down here for the first time uh, and it was the last time mom would be down here. It was so fun to be around them. And then I went up the week after for Mother's Day weekend. And that's when I started to bond with the little one, Celestina. <laughs> we got into playing with blocks, these gigantic Lego blocks, really big ones. And I don't know, she she loved my horse. She's into horses. And we started making these little horse houses. And that was her little thing. We just do everything. It was just the cutest thing, building these little make-believe horse houses with her. And this block here was for her water. This block here would give her carrot juice. This block was the tray you could put other treats in and a place for hay. It was so cute. We'd spend quite a few uh, moments together doing that. And she's a very creative little girl. Looking forward to seeing her. And I'll do whatever I can to encourage her creativity. It's a natural state with a kid. That's that's such pure creative energy right there. You look at, I've said it before in a past podcast where a kid can present you with a drawing and you smile and enjoy it because it's a kid. You're not criticizing, you know, if it looks lifelike, if the colors are right, if they're coloring within the lines. You don't care. You want to encourage them and Say, that's a good piece of art. Because <clears throat> they're a kid. And it's at some point, though, when they get older, that, mm, yeah, you could do better. <laughs> and that kind of kills the spirit. Now, obviously, there's a way to handle that. There's another way you could talk to them about it. It's just the evolution of them growing up. And I pray I could still be very encouraging and reasonable and... Uh, not so critical with whatever creative talents my niece and granddaughter decide to get into, whether it is even anything in the arts. 
It'd be great if they were. I would definitely support them 100%. And if they need help in any way, I'll be there for them. Got to support them. Show them that they matter. That they're loved. And that's what I really want is time. Losing mom last year showed me, obviously, time can be up so quickly. And... I do have a day job, and I'm spending a lot of time there. It's not a creative atmosphere, really. I have great coworkers, but it's just it's a civil uh, department where you're dealing with people filing domestic violence injunctions, evictions, divorces, small claims cases, paternity. It's just an endless stream of people with some of the worst situations they're having to deal with. It's kind of funny that it's a civil department and they're having to deal with these situations. And I'm there, I'm the cashier. I have to hear their stories, hear their tales and deal with some of their zaniness, their dramatic tales. And I've gotten a few story ideas, which I may have to uh, expand upon. They could be very interesting movies that I'll add a twist to, of course. But after a while, you know, I'm tired of hearing the same old crap. It's like if people are filing injunctions against their children, against their grandchildren. Like, who attacks their grandfather? Who attacks their parents? What kind of dummy does that? What is wrong with you people? I mean, maybe the area... I, that's something I can never figure out for myself. Why do certain areas have the have these problems and things going on? Uh, that's another thing. You, you're not born into... Uh, you have no choice of what environment you're going to be raised in. I never get that. <laughs> I may be jumping off the uh, path here, but that is another thing. If you know you live in a bad area, why would you bring a kid into that? Why? Control your damn hormones. If you think you want to get it on with someone, wear as much protection as possible. Please. If you're not 100% sure that you want to bring a kid into the world, just be certain that, okay, I'm not ready for this. Just let me put out as much protection as possible. And, uh, all right, you know, just be aware of that. And, man, if you do have a kid, be an example. My mom had hard times, but she was always so loving and caring. She did the best she could. I always have fond memories of her. She disciplined me. I mean, she washed my mouth out with soap for lying. Hey, I deserved that one. She was upset. I lied to her. Um, but I have mo- more fond memories of her than bad, of course. I got very lucky that she was my mom. And I was so grateful that I got 48 years with her on this planet. I mean, some years I didn't get to see her <clears throat> living down here in Florida. She's up in New York. But most of those years, we visit at least once. Um, I just wish I had more time. It really stinks. I can't share a new experience with, with her face to face. Yeah, I've, I feel her presence many times, but you know, it's not the same. It's uh, Death is really... Oof. <laughs> it's a lousy, a lousy thing. I just don't know why we have to be put on this planet to enjoy and love things and be around humans and animals and and they can be taken away from us. I mean, we know that maybe lives have a certain expiration date based on just chronology. We know that you can, as you approach 80s and 90s, okay, time may be up, but you can die way before that. And... Damn, I'm trying to make the most with my life. It's it's hard. I, I'm not, not crazy about the job itself I have. I mean, hopefully we'll see where things go and I can lead a more creative life. And that's what I'm hoping inspires the rest of this podcast. I've had so many people that have quit their day jobs and pursue a life in the creative arts or their entire lives have just been their art, whether it's music or graphic design. And some of them are finding art later in life, but even if it's something to enjoy, 
It's 